Bye. Welcome, everybody. This is the Rotary Club of Silicon Valley. Every week, we bring you stories of people who are working to make the world a better place, locally, globally, and or digitally. Uh, the Rotary Club of Silicon Valley is part of Rotary International, 1.4 million Rotarians and Rotaractors in tens of thousands of clubs all over the planet uh, who meet regularly in order to say, how might we, right? And that how might we is, is actually one of those questions that entrepreneurs ask. And today we have speaking to us an entrepreneur who has a degree in computer engineering and uh, computer programming, and just one of those people who who's very much in the space of what if. Uh, and and so I'm excited for her to share, share her story about cool pavement, because as anyone might know, you can find our club by going to rotary.cool. And if she doesn't already have the domain, probably quite soon, pavement.cool will be our speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Clara to Clara Nore Morad Khan uh, to the Rotary Club of Silicon Valley. We're happy to have you and excited for you to take uh, take the mic and share your story. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for inviting me. This is really exciting. So I'm going to do a 12 minutes presentation, and then we will jump into QA. And please feel free to ask any questions you have. So I am going to set my timer real quick so we can get started. Again, my name is Claire Moroccan at Nore. I'm the CEO or co-founder of eBay. So uh, with our agenda is we're gonna be doing a quick overview and then we'll talk about the problems we're facing and how ePay plays a role in the solution. The, in the overview, we'll talk about um, the climate emergency and how ePay can be part of that solution. With the problem, we will dive in more about pavement, something that most of us need, drive on, but rarely look at, and why it poses a major threat to the way, uh, our, our way of life on earth, and also ePave solution, and how our patented technology is going to able to address some of those issues that we are facing. On the overview, so as we said, we are facing a climate emergency, all of us know, and ePave aims to be a part of that solution and how we're going to play that role. Um, as we know, global warming is has a devastating um, impact on the environment and it's accelerating. We are definitely falling short of uh, climate, uh, Paris Climate Accord goals. There are five, five goals, three important ones that we have set and we're, we're kind of rushing to get to those goals. And, um, it's also, if we don't get to those goals, it's threatening the worldwide economies. Um, also, ePave is going to play a role in all that. Now, the problem. So what is the problem that pavement, uh, when we talk about pavements, what's the problem that we're facing? Pavements, uh, first of all, retain, especially asphalt, retain heat. As we know, 90 almost 45% of urban areas are covered with um, pavement. And 95% of those pavements are asphalt. And think about how asphalt retains the heat and creates urban heat island. It also impacts the toxicity because it emanates chemicals. Um, when it gets really hot, it emanates all those chemicals. And even if it, when it's not too hot, it still emanates chemicals and has carb carbon emission. And also it um, global warming. As, well, as we mentioned. So let's talk about urban heat island. What is an urban heat island? When we have buildings concentrated in the urban areas, it starts creating this uh, a lot of heat because as we said, so a lot of buildings, like especially uh, a lot of pavements, starts um, retaining the heat uh, during the day and giving it away at nighttime. So it creates those extremely hot areas, especially downtown areas and urban areas, which is called urban heat island. If you measure the heat on those areas, they're usually one to seven degrees warmer than the um, than average uh, climate or um, rural areas. So this urban heat islands are becoming a major issue because urban heat island, they've done studies that urban heat island is the largest contributor, one of the largest contributors of the um, uh, greenhouse gas emission. Now, 
Uh, this the, In this slide, I'm gonna just cover pretty much everything that asphalt does. Asphalt is a major problem. Yes, it's a structural problem that we've been, structural uh, product that we've been using, but it also has uh, a lot of problems attached to it. First and foremost, asphalt goes through an oxidation process. Oxidation means that when it hits the surface, when the heat hits the surface of a pavement, it starts uh, getting rid of that binding agent, right? And it starts, um, this binding agent starts disappearing and then it creates cracks. Water penetrates into those cracks and it turns into major potholes. And as we know, like right now when in LA and because of the rain season we had everywhere you go, you, uh, you, you can't, you miss, a, you, I'm sorry, you hit a, a pothole for sure. Another uh, thing that would asphalt that every three to five years, they have to, municipalities have to do some kind of a maintenance plan. And that maintenance plan becomes extremely expensive. And sometimes they miss it. Um, they either do, first of all, they have to do the crack sealing and pothole filling, but they also have to do some kind of a, uh, um, add some kind of a binder, which is called slurry. So they keep adding this binder which is very hazardous to the environment and it doesn't save those roads for long term. So they keep repeating this cycle every few years. And every time they repeat, they close a the street, they have to close it for 12 hours to 24 hours. It becomes very disruptive. And municipalities sometimes face this big challenge of how can we do this so it's, it doesn't have too much of an impact on those neighborhoods that we are putting a brand new surface on. And after 2020, on the third part of this is the environmental issues. Uh, after 2022, we started getting a lot of information, especially in US News, published an article that it was um, for the first time I had ever seen that talks about the major problems we're facing with asphalt. Asphalt adds to urban heat island and um, uh, greenhouse gas emission and it has uh, toxic emissions that it's really hazardous to our health. Now, so what is ePave solution? First and foremost, ePave is a reflective cool pavement coat. We're gonna hear about this word a lot in the next few years. Reflective cool pavement is synonymous to cool, or sometimes they just call it cool pavement. What it does, it reflects the heat. And when it reflects the heat, it goes through the atmosphere. It doesn't crap, uh, get trapped inside the atmosphere. And that's the important thing about reflective coatings. So reflective coatings helps cool the environment. And what happens is, let's say if you have asphalt, which reflects only 10%, reflective coatings can be 40%, 30% um, to 40% reflective. And we also have to be very careful with this number because we don't want it to be too reflective because we're gonna be driving on those surfaces and it's really important for us to keep that in mind also. So cool pavements, because they keep it cool, keep the surfaces cool, they preserve both asphalt and concrete surfaces. It reduces those climate change impacts because it reduces the heat not only on the surface, but ambient air, and it becomes very cost-effective. Now, how? I think you should ask why and how. So when we started the technology a few years ago, we were thinking about coming up with a solution that is not petroleum based, it's polymer based and has a little bit of, it's a polymer and cementaceous mixed product. But we wanted to make sure that the surfaces were durable. That was our first focus. How can we make sure that the surfaces are durable? So we wanted to make sure that the product saves time and money because right now it cuts the maintenance costs by almost 50%. We were able to return the, a road to uh, traffic, back to traffic within an hour to two hours in a hot day like this, it's probably will be one hour we can open to traffic. So which was almost 20 times faster than petroleum based product. And we have gone through a lot of um, testing of the technology to know that it exceeds all the national highway standards. So it's very safe and durable. And on the environmental aspect then, because of the reflectiveness, it decreases the urban heat island Therefore, it decreases the greenhouse gas emission, and there is no toxic emission from ePave. So it's very safe to be um, in the neighborhoods. So if you ask the, the uh, solution and the impact that ePave is making, I'll say it's threefold. 
economic impact, environmental impact, and human impact. On the economic impact, uh, we need fewer repairs when you use this technology, um, lower maintenance costs, and also there's studies that we're doing and it's ongoing. How can we lower the energy, uh, air, condi air conditioning usage of the buildings that you put EPAs around? On the environmental aspect of it, it fights the climate change effects, uh, it lowers the air temperature and also the ambient air, and it qualifies a project for need. On the human aspect of it, it reduces the, all the heat-related um, effects and illnesses, and also it eliminates any toxic pavement that comes from, from a surface. So pretty much the most important thing I would say is why you would think now. Um, when I started this, um, my background is engineering, mathematics, science, all this, but uh, as I said, I never paid attention to pavement. But when I started kind of looking into pavements, we kind of realized that pavements, when they did this 1930s, when they built the highways, and uh, they were only thinking about what can we do to build roads. We never focused on what about maintenance? What can we do to maintain our, our, our roads? And now all those years later, we're thinking, wait a second, those roads, 15 years ago, they started, 15, 20 years ago, they started thinking, now we have to start focusing on maintaining the roads. But maintaining the roads, they're using the same products that actually destroys the roads, which is petroleum-based products that goes into the ox uh, goes through the oxidation process. So I think the timing for ePay is ideal because the most important thing is that we're focusing on infrastructure, that we're making sure that we don't redo this every few years. Um, all the facilities and maintenance, they have a very limited budget, it's tax dollars, and they wanted to make sure that taxpayers' dollars spent smart, so that they, that's why there's a very limited budget there, so we have to be also uh, careful of that. And one of the major problems we're facing, climate change, how can we do a pavement surface that actually helps fight the climate change? Again, 45% of our urban areas are covered with pavement. And my favorite one is, why can, what can we do to bring the infrastructure design from the previous century to the current century and make sure that it supports human health. So with that, well, I think I finished it less than 12 minutes, um, but I wanted to leave you with these pictures that the, the ePave can be, offers a range of application. It can be used on roads. It can be used on bike lanes because it's a color customizable. It can be used um, on schools and you name it. It's a very, I like to call it a versatile technology that it could pretty much work um, anywhere and it can be also help decrease the heat on the surfaces. So if I have time um, later on, if you have any questions, we can dive more into the test results, the tests we have done. We have also have um, more projects, more, more uh, pictures about technology of projects we have done within Southern California and client examples, client testimonials. Um, so with that, I will stop. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Excellent. Well, Clara, thank you very much. Uh, let's let's talk a, a little bit about our timing, uh, and then let's also introduce our, our team. Uh, sure. First, the introductions uh, from our club. We have here in the Bay Area, we have, we have a completely Bay Area focused group uh, today. Phil Dean. Phil, good to have you, sir. Uh, Shags, our paella master, also uh, in, in the, the upper upper side of Bay Area that way. Excellent. Um, I am in the South Bay in San Jose. And uh, and Clara, you are in Southern California. Right. So so we have a 100% a, a California group. I can't quite recall the last time we had that. All good. Um, our timing of the recording uh, is the day before Earth Day. And uh, part of what's happening uh, today and tomorrow is the 2023 ERILA, which is focused on environmental sustainability. Uh, heard from a speaker who is part of the team of the uh, Environmental Sustainability Rotary Action Group. Uh, mm -hmm. And so very, very cool that SRAG is, is out there doing the cool uh, work that they are doing also. So as always, we'll we'll open it up to questions this way. If you have a question and uh, simply put in the chat, I have a question, I'll know to recognize you. You can also raise your hand in Zoom fashion. 
Um, or you can write your question in the chat and I'll be happy to read it. So Clara, let's start with um, with with some of the elements of how this works, because we're, we're really looking at, at what you're doing from both an environmental standpoint and an, and an entrepreneurial standpoint. So tell us a little bit about how you how you came to the idea and decided to launch the business. Yes, uh, great question. I like this question because sometimes when I have really bad days, I sit there and I ask my question. Uh, I ask this question for myself: How the hell did I get into this? Uh, so my um, my story is really interesting. So um, I um, I was uh, I'm Armenian and I was uh, born in Iran and uh, moved to the United States to go to college. And I always wanted to be a journalist. Uh, but for some reason, I was also very interested to do science. So science has always been something that I was interested in. But I do remember when I was 12 years old, I remember we had this um, uh, science professor asked us, go home and think about what you want to do when you grow up. And when you come back, um, I don't want dull answers. So I went home and I thought to myself, the first thing that I thought to myself, I want to be able to make a, make an impact in the world. And I want to make a difference. And I want to do something cool. I want to, I want to come up with something interesting. And I want to change the world, you know, at a 12-year-old. What did I know? But then it's, uh, so I just, when I moved here, I studied engineering and I was science and mathematics. And I was, I was, um, I was very happy with my, um, with what I was doing. But then there was something that, that whole itch came back again. Until my brother started talking about, um, he was on a recent on a trip to um, Armenia, which my ancestors are from, and then he noticed that some of those roads are completely broken, and there was nothing, and those villagers have no food during winter time because they have no access to go to town and buy anything, and God forbid if somebody is sick in that village. And he said um, he started researching, um, and then he said, you know, he came up with polymer-based technologies and. He met with a scientist and he said, he asked me, would you, would you be interested in doing something like this? And I said, no, it's crazy because roads are a big undertaking. No, but then I, did, I think universe, God had a bit different plan because uh, so for, for a year or two, he came coming back, kept coming back. And finally I said, I'll look into it. The minute I found out about the technology, the minute I found out about all the amazing things that he does, I was hooked and I thought, why is it first I thought why is it, I'm sure somebody else have thought about this it's why me but then when you get over your own um your own insecurities <laughs> you're like okay I guess I guess there is a plan here so that's when I started I, I I just started kind of diving more into the technology and I wanted to make sure that this is a viable technology so we spent most of our time kind of doing the research, doing the uh, um, lab testings, making sure this technology is viable. And then when we brought it, uh, we, we decided to start form the company. Um, I didn't know much about the reflective coatings and the impact it has on climate. And I think that's something that eventually evolved. And right now, my focus is that uh, I do the technology. I, I work with the technologists, of course, but I face the client municipalities and the governmental agencies that have the problem. And I go back to my team and say, this is the problem, how can we face it? So that's my story. That's how the whole thing started. Very cool. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that is exciting for uh, us in, in the in the e-club, uh, as, as the Rotary e-club of Silicon Valley, we're a crowd that believes in the power of technology and innovative thinking to to make a difference where, where it's needed. I'll say that I... I one of the things that I feel like I may have learned, and, and tell me if I have this right from your presentation, uh, when I think about sunlight coming into the atmosphere, that mm -hmm. heats the earth, keeps us from the, the deathly cold of, of space. I mean, that's great. Um, when, we, when we try to imagine how temperatures are rising, we think about, okay, if we're burning petroleum fuels, uh, that creates a certain kind of exhaust that... Uh, that that heats up in the atmosphere. All right, I can see that as well. But you're talking about light essentially activating heat from petroleum products that are already created and and deployed. Right. And so so the idea is to use is to reflect the sunlight so that less of it is getting to the asphalt in order to limit 
the the heat added to the atmosphere. Do I have that right? You have it right. So okay. the way it works that when the sunlight hits, so asphalt starts retaining all the heat, which actually contributes to break the oxidation and the breaking of the asphalt. But much more, uh, much more than that, it also creates this heat islands and the heat islands also have a direct effect in creating greenhouse gas. And so all this, and that's not the only thing that happens. When asphalt hits a certain degree, which hits, uh, let's say if it's uh, 75 degrees today, for example, asphalt can easily be 100 degrees, easily. And the minute asphalt hits 100 degrees, the uh, those toxic emissions double. Let's say if it's 10% uh, in, on a regular day, it's a 10%. When it's hot, when it's 100 degrees, it's 20%. So imagine all that, you and I, breathe that into our lungs. So that's by itself, it's it's toxic emission. But going back to the reflective coating part of it, what, what EPAVE does, so when it reflects, because it's constantly reflecting, it doesn't keep the heat. It doesn't keep the retained the heat. So it's constantly reflecting. But it's, when it's reflecting, it's reflecting through the at Earth's atmosphere. So it goes into the space. It doesn't get trapped. And that's pretty much why this is, a, this is important that the heat and the uh, it doesn't get trapped inside the atmosphere. And, and that's what's causing the additional heat, additional CO2. So that's why I say, uh, even though scientists have been doing a ton of studies around this for, their, I work with a scientist who's been doing this for almost 40 years. And um, when, I, when I talk to him, they've been doing this for years, but the gap between the technology, the, the gap between the science that, been done in the lab and a product like us has never been filled. And here we come in and we're saying, here's the science and here's the technology. How can we fill this gap? And that's what's happening. So you're right. Yes, it does not get the heat, doesn't get trapped. It goes through the Earth's atmosphere and keeps the surfaces cooler. Now, every color, every, uh, every, every, every raw material we use it plays a big role about how much do we reflect 30%, 40%, those all play a role. But so, so by, what, but uh, basically what you said is correct. Okay. So I would imagine um, that there, you, you know, that the use cases could, could work this way first, that, that you're going to have a number of local entities, uh, you know, maybe, spaces where you know they've got their parking lots or or a town has its roads or, or whatever it might be that say well we want to try this pavement in some way so so some kind of a pilot project with it mm -hmm. but on the a, along the way to to getting this to be a a more um widely understood and accepted um product for for these purposes i can also imagine a a a foreign country essentially saying, we want to do something really, really big because we believe this technology can have, have a major impact you know, across this larger space. And maybe they have a government that can act more quickly for one reason or another. Um, but so, so my, all of that to say, can you tell us a little bit about projects that, that are currently using the technology and have you done anything internationally? Yes. Uh, so you're 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 absolutely right. Use cases are key. I say data for startups is golden. If we can have any data, if we can have any pilot projects and gather data, that's 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 priceless. So let me ask uh, answer your first question and then I'll ask the second part of it. So as far as the use cases are concerned, uh, uh, there are projects that we work with and they're great partners with us because they collect the data. And the, when they collect the data, one of the schools that we did, for example, they collected uh, four years worth of data. And the way they do it is very simple. I mean, they don't have to have gadgets uh, to, to do it, a thermometer that measures the heat. So they collect, so basically they measure the heat on the on e-pave and they measure the heat on the surrounding asphalt and they record it. So when you look at the, by the time this three, four years, and they do it at different times, when you collect the heat data, 10 o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock and 3 p.m. are completely different because of the sun's direction, the data 
and information is, is completely different. And of course, the major impact happens right at 12 o'clock. Um, but when you look at the data and you see the type of, um, uh, in the past, like for example, three, four years that we collected the data, consistently, EPAP was 10, all the way from 10 to 20 degrees cooler. So those kids that were, uh, the school that we did was a bike riding school. The kids that are playing on those surfaces, that they can easily walk barefoot, they can kind of play there, and then they can't do that on asphalt. Now, the projects we've done mostly, um, our partners are municipalities. They ask questions and we go back to the scientists and we work with the scientific communities and say, so how do we address this? And so we've done uh, um, County of LA, we work with County of LA, City of Glendale, City of LA, we're currently working with City of Glendale, but there are also entities like Disney, for example, that are interested. So we're working with Disney, we're working with uh, Los Angeles Unified School District. We are also working, part of our job is not only do the introduce the material to them and do the application, but also uh, make sure that people know what this um, technology does because a lot of people don't know much about it. So uh, our focus is Southern California. But that doesn't mean that if we're getting um, calls from anywhere else in the world, we, we don't pay attention and we do. So South Africa is one of those places that we are uh, closely working with our partners, Department of Energy there and military trying to kind of take the technology and do pilots. Um, we're working with Germany. Germany has already tested our technology and they are trying to use, they're mostly interested in the durability aspect of it. Of course, the uh, heat reduction is an added bonus. Um, we are also done some project in Armenia. And um, so those are the countries that we're working with now, but that doesn't mean like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all those countries, we are constantly in communication with that they, they want us, they want data, they want information, we'll send it to them. But I would say Southern California is our hub. When we, we want to make sure that we answer all the questions here so we're able to fly. Um, that's pretty much what our um, vision is. So a, a final question before we uh, wind down the recording sure. uh, came, came, comes in from from Phil, uh, you, you know, and his his question is, since the main problem appears to be the use of asphalt, what is being done to find a different material? I'll add to that that given that you are already talking to people about their surfaces, you, you seem to be in an awfully good position to advocate for a different material if such a thing is available. So, so our, our, our combined question is, is about uh, how, how your surface might work with non-asphalt uh, materials in order to, to limit further the amount of heat that's being generated. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's another great question. The the product EPAVE is a, a preservation material, which is really important to focus on, meaning that it does not go on dirt. Like if you have a dirt road and you're you're thinking, oh, I should do something about this, that surface has to be asphalt or concrete or whatever else they do before EPAVE can be on 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 top of that. Now, as a so as a structural product structural products become super expensive, but they can't do it. Like, well, let's say if uh, a surface breaks down, they don't redo the entire surface. They do some maintenance plan, right? So what we're what advocating is right before you get, let your surface get to a point that's breaking, do some kind of a maintenance plan, put EPAVE on it that will protect your surface, make it durable, and also um, decrease the heat. Now, if you have as I said, if you have an existing surface, EPAV can work. If you have an existing surface of asphalt and also concrete, EPAV can work on it. And if you look, 95% of our urban areas are covered with asphalt, the other 5% are covered with concrete. So we're, we're good here. There's nothing else that they, they use that EPAV cannot be, uh, cannot be on. So uh, I hope I answered your question, but pretty much it could be are used as a preservation material on an existing surface. Perfect. And, and Shags uh, captures that beautifully in, in the chat with makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. What we'll do is we'll wind down our, our recording today, though I will tell all of our members and guests that one of the benefits of taking part in the recording is that we get to keep talking to these fascinating people even after we push stop recording. 
So by all means, uh, members of the E-Club, if you haven't recently been part of one of these recordings, we hope you will join sometime soon. Uh, to all of our viewers and guests, thank you very much for taking time to uh, to get inspired by the kind of uh, the kind of entrepreneurial thinking that uh, that Clara exemplifies, and that we hope that you will will be with us each week as we try to bring more and more and more stories uh, that that allow you to see the 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 positive that service brings to the world and to feel uh, the, the the joy that's a part of that as well. Um, as we always like to do, we hand it over to our speaker for a final word. Clara, what would you like people to have in mind uh, as they step away from the recording? Yes. First, thank you so much for inviting me. This is I'm excited to talk about the technology. Uh, for years, um, uh, most entrepreneurs will tell you this. You have to do the legwork for years and years and years. I was working in my cubicle and with my team and trying to make sure that the product that we're bringing forward is the best it could be. And we're not the best at, the, at our best yet, but that's what we are working towards. So for me, it's really interesting that people become curious. People ask questions because there's a lot of um, information out there saying, oh, we need to decrease the heat, but every single person wants to know, how can I contribute? I think just knowing and asking questions from your um, representatives is an important step towards your, 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 your contribution to helping decrease the heat and also uh, towards the global, helping decrease the global warming and uh, address the issues. So I would say stay curious, read, ask questions, and ask those questions from your representatives. Why not? Um, because I, what, what I would like to see, and I'm hoping that there will be more funding available, that there will be funding available for technologies like this. So I know even when electrical vehicles started, there were not very many people who were interested. Now, everywhere you look, there's either a Tesla or an EV, right? Electrical vehicle running around and people are curious and they wanna know. But it started with just a simple question, is this the only solution we have? And I am hoping that people will look at the pavements in a different way than I do and say that, uh, that I did and say, listen, what else can we do about this pavement? Can we do a, a, a solution that not only makes our surfaces durable, but also help decrease the heat on? That's Perfect. what I would do. Curiosity. Thank you. Yes, yes. And, and, and a beautiful thing to focus on as well. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being part of it uh, this week. And we will see you next week.